Hi, I'm Raylene Taskowski, and I've talked to over 10,000 women about sex over the past decade. Welcome to the Stand Up Comedy Sex Ed podcast. Welcome to Stand Up Comedy Sex Ed. It's where you can get questions answered like... How long does it take the average man to orgasm? And... How long does it take the average woman to orgasm? And also... Why is it so hot in here? Audiences agree. It's brilliantly funny. Raylene makes sex ed fun. This show is entertaining, factual, and relatable. There's nothing worse than being halfway done with sex and feeling your vagina shut down on you. (laughs) You've got to see stand-up comedy sex ed. I am ready to go do that comedy show. (laughs) Welcome to the Stand-Up Comedy Sex Ed podcast, hosted by Raylene Taskowski and some other guy, girl, guest, or guru. And today's guest girl guru is my friend Amy Miley. Say hi, Amy. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) The intro is always awkward because I never know exactly how I'm going to say that. But um, I met Amy about, I want to say seven years ago or so at a a party that I had done. Uh, She was there with her girlfriend and they were the cutest freaking little couple I had ever seen. Okay. Well, I mean, I could start by saying... I could say that, uh, wow, I really thought about this so much, too. Um, (laughs) God damn it. Um, Well, I'm a licensed electrician in southeastern Connecticut, and so that's what I do 40 hours a week, 40-plus hours a week every single day. And uh, so I work in a male-dominated field that has its own set of challenges and surprises every day. Like, I don't have access to a bathroom all the time. Sometimes it's a porter potty. Sometimes it's the back of a truck in a cup that I'm peeing into or changing my tampon or anything that I have to do during the day um, when we're on a remote job. So that's fun. (laughs) Amy has listened to all of my podcasts, and I love it because after them, she will uh, message me and be like, I really like this one, or here's the answer to the question that you just asked in that one which I think is really cool. And so then I just said, Hey, do you want to talk about sex? And she's like, yeah, sure. But you can (laughs) not a professional podcaster yet. (laughs) No. And I'm upset because I was actually like, I was thinking I was uh, talking over a party like two weeks ago and I was like, I could do this. I could become a podcaster. I would just talk about everything and anything because I can't stop talking all the time. And (laughs) I don't know what the fuck to say. Um, um, I can take time uh, to get used to it. Just yeah, shit to I, say. yeah, I have a bunch of stuff written down, but I, I do want to talk about um, like working with men and like how funny that is, because like I feel like, you know, you have your like husbands and your boyfriends that go to work and they're in construction and obviously they're talking about sex. I mean, you probably go to work and talk about sex. I mean, like guys do it all the time. Right. Like, oh, I just got laid last night, or fucking, I'm going to get laid tonight, or I'm going to go get flowers, you know? And that's, like, so common. So, like, I do the same thing, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to not talk about it, especially because I love talking about it. So, <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, I have, like, very in-depth conversations with my coworkers about sex, and it seems so weird to, like, tell other people, like, yeah, like, we talk about, like, you know, each other's girlfriends and like how they interact with sex and like how they're doing and like the problems that they have in their sexual relationship. And it's, you know, it's like so like normal at work. And then I like come home and I'm like, oh, was I supposed to say that? Like, you know, <laughs> welcome to my world. Um, yeah. Like <laughs> every time um, I do a podcast, but, I'm like, oh, um, shit, I should not have said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh my God. I've said some, some really not uh, like if Sarah knew, well, she does know. I have said some (laughs) way (laughs) personal stuff and even my coworkers were like, what the fuck? (laughs) And I'm like, oh yeah, that was just a joke. Totally a joke. Not real. (laughs) Um, but so I know I've told you this story, but it's like my favorite story to tell about work. Um, is when I was on a job and there was no bathrooms, there was no mirrors, we were outside 
couldn't do anything. And I had, I, so I had started wearing cups, um, which is uh, a type of menstrual product. I don't know if everybody listening would know that, but I'm going to actually do an episode on those one day. Cause I fucking love my cup. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cups are awesome. And they're so great for the environment. But I started out using these like big, like almost like, like female condom looking fucking cups. Yeah. And, um, because they were easier to put in and they were more comfortable and I couldn't figure out the like reusable cup thing at all. I just figured it out. But, um, so anyway, I had one of those and the problem with those is you always had to like wear a pad because sometimes they would like spill. spill right. <laughs> yeah. They would, uh, they would dump essentially. And so I was at work and I was in my baggy work pants and I did not have a pad on, but I had a cup in and I, I had bent down and I just felt it just dump everywhere. And I'm like, Oh fuck me. And I'm outside. And so I like pull my pants away from me as much as I can. And I'm like, Oh fuck. So I like, you know, get in the back of the truck and fucking try to fix everything and whatever. But I, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't see the back of my pants. I couldn't see if there was blood on me or anything. And you know, that thing that girls do in high school, like, Hey, can you check me? I didn't yeah. have a girl to check me. So I went over to my coworker who is like six years older than me <laughs> and a guy. Um, and I said, Hey, I said, I'm going to need you to put your big boy pants on for a minute. Um, so I had a cup in and then he's like, well, what's a cup? And so I had to explain to him what a cup was and I'm like, and sometimes they spill. And, uh, he's like, okay. He's like so confused at why I'm telling him this. And I'm like, I need you to check my ass. I need you to see if I have blood like all over me. You know what I mean? And so I just, and he's like, okay. So I just like bent <laughs> over. <laughs> he's like, you're good. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. But, like, <laughs> that's the shit I have to do. You know what I mean? And I have to be comfortable at work to do shit like that. You know? Yeah. I have um, a, a story. Uh, <laughs> I may or may not ever turn this into a comedy routine, but I was in Chicago and I was taking a, uh, what do you call it? One of those bus tours where um, you're just on a bus driving around, you know, a hop on, hop off bus tour. And so I'm up there and I'm at the point, this was like five years ago six years ago or so, I'm at the point where I'm going into menopause, my periods are massively heavy, and I wear an ultra tampon and um, a pad at all times before I started using the cup. So here I am, yeah. I'm on this on off bus tour, and uh, you know, and I'm standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down to look at stuff and do whatever, and at some point I realized that my pad has shifted forward. And so now it is basically in front of my pubic area and clitoris <laughs> and ureter, but it's nowhere near the exit of the vagina where the blood flow is about to explode. And, oh, and there's nowhere to go. I am on the bus and we are in the city, in the city part of Chicago where we're in between all of the very tall um, buildings. And, I, and I'm like, fuck, I just started to leak. And there's, there's nothing I can do. Like there is no appropriate way for me to shift my underwear while standing on top of this bus. And so <laughs> I have a, a pad in my purse, like a smaller one, like a panty liner one. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm going for broke. So I open, I open it up. I don't even take the sticky stuff off because I know I'm not going to be able to get it in with the sticky stuff. And I, I stand up and I'm behind every. There's nobody behind me, but I'm behind everybody. And I, and I stand up so I can get access to my ass. <laughs> and, and I say to everybody, what's that over there? And when everybody looks over there, I take the pad and I really quickly shove it down my butt to underneath and <laughs> stick it underneath <laughs> the other pad and sit back down. And I'm thinking oh, to myself, my. there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of windows above me. 
somewhere in Chicago, somebody saw that happen. <laughs> oh yeah, somebody was. Somebody definitely saw that. That somebody is was fucking like, what hilarious. What the fuck just happened? I mean, I did it super <laughs> fast, but I was just like, "This is gonna get bloody ugly in a second. I have got to take care of it." And so yeah. when I finally did get off, uh, I was like, "Where's the nearest bathroom? Where's the like?" I'm like grabbing all these strangers, like, "Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom?" Where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> so I could go in and save myself. So yeah, periods are fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially when you have always have an access to a bathroom, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I, I do like the cups. I I have even managed to dump a cup and put it back in in a porta potty because I had to. And oh, um, that's cool. Yeah, it's a trick. Yeah, a balance. I and my cup was pretty expensive, so I'm like, if I drop it, it's dead to me. So. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna definitely gonna tell you this stuff. So first off, <laughs> I just started wearing like a reusable cup. So now I have to. I'm in a customer's house. I can't go anywhere. You know what I mean? I can't fuck this up. So, right. um, so I finally mastered that. Right, doing it in a customer's house and like really being very careful to not. If I get, that's so fucked up. You know what right. I mean? If you, somebody goes, that's working on your house and they fucking get blood in your, that's fucked up. I can't do that, you know? But um, the other day, oh my God, you might not even want to put this on here, but <laughs> the other day I had actually like, I had pooped and peed and I took out my cup and I dropped it in the toilet. Oh my God. And <laughs> It's do? so gross. Don't put that on there, but that is for you. That is well, for your not. Honestly, I I had done that and I took it out and I boiled it. But you were at a customer's yeah, house, so uh, yeah. I, yeah. Well, did you capture it? And yeah, it? no, or yeah. Just, obviously, I took it yeah. out. Like you said, they're fucking expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but that's you know what though. It's important to know that to because there's other people out there that it's happened to, and they need to know that it happens. Because and the thing is, you're more likely to drop it when you're pooping because you're pushing. So. Yeah, I mean, I was after I pooped, then I decided to take it out, which may have not been the right order to do things anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, you know, no, I, I boiled that sucker, and I'm like, all right, well, and all right, so here's, here is a, a, a weird, a weird thing. Um, I had asked a, um, a woman who had, uh, what do you call it, um, extensions, yeah, natural hair mm -hmm. extensions, and I said, so if you're like done with them, do you sell them? And she's like, and she, and she was just like, ew, oh my God, what? And she got like super pissy with me about it. And I'm like, well, it's just hair. Can't you just wash it and, you know, like sell it? And, and I don't know if she was saying, you know, like, ew, you're so stupid. Obviously we do that. Or ew, you're so stupid. Why we do that? But there are also cup committees that I've seen online where if you got a cup and it didn't suit you, you boil it, you sell it to somebody else, they boil it and then they use it. And I'm like, okay. And that's something that goes in your vagina. That's not hair. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah. Cause I bought a, uh, the, my cup, I came in a, like a four pack and it had two little ones and two big ones. And I, I've tried the big ones are not happening. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's interesting to know. I, I do find sometimes they're just a pain but they're almost always better than tampons. But sometimes getting them to open, oh, oh. I'm telling you, last night, middle of the night, one o'clock in the morning, I sprung a leak, so I gotta go change it, because I'm like I said, I'm menopausing, so it's like a full-on Niagara fucking falls all the time. Um, <laughs> and so, but it wouldn't open up. And I'm like squishing and turning and pulling and pushing and swishing and turning, and I'm like, mother just open. <laughs> <laughs> so for the guys who are listening to this, and I know we have a couple, and for the girls who don't, haven't used one before, you have to fold them up so they fit inside. Because like the diameter is like one and a half inches across. So it's supposed to go up and kind of not really seal, but it's supposed to suction up near your cervix. So as the blood is coming out, it just catches it. And it does a pretty good job, but you have to get it up there. And during the course of your life and your day and whatever, the length of your vaginal canal changes. And so sometimes you pop it up there and 
you can feel the little tabby like hanging out. You're like, oh, that's uncomfortable. And sometimes it's so far up there, you're like, I'm going to need help getting this out. <laughs> no shit. You got to bear down and squeeze and pull. And, um, but it, so you <laughs> fold it in this, like, like a, you fold it in half and then in half again. And then you put it in. And then yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. Yeah. There's like eight different ways to fold it. I just learned. Um, just out there, just yeah. putting that out there. <laughs> but there's like, yeah, there's a bunch of different ways, but but it still has to open once it gets in and it has to be right. in the right spot. So if, you're, if your vaginal canal is super elongated at that moment, you got to get it up there and twist it and squeeze it until it actually pops open. Otherwise, it's not doing anything. It's just the blood will just go past it and right out. So, and uh, I was going to say, have you had sex with it in but you have a different kind of sex than I do, so. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I haven't had sex with that in, and honestly, to be honest, period sex with two girls is like, well, we both get our period. It's not really gross to us at all. So <laughs> it's like, okay, just try to pick a lighter day. That's all. Yeah, I I know that people have down had down. sex with it in. I'm just afraid it'll dislodge. You know, like bump the bump the yeah. suction and then create a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the um the big ones that kind of look like female condoms, I think those would be better to have sex in. Well, personally, cuz uh, they're they're not as No, I'm just saying mine's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, if these ones are like almost flat. They're like yeah, big and round. They're like a oh, yeah, yeah, like a mason jar top. Yeah, I gave you mine, remember? I had leftover ones. Oh, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never yeah. could get those to fit properly, ever. But these reusable ones I like. Um, oh, and you know what? Yeah. I know this isn't really about sex, but it's about periods and whatever most of us on this podcast have vaginas. Um, I ha My daughter also has super, super, super heavy periods. And I told her to use the ultras. And she's like, oh, my God, that's disgusting. How big do you think my vagina is? And I said... Your tampon size has nothing to do with your vagina size. It has to do with your flow. And if you are blowing through a regular in an hour, you need a heavier tampon. And, then, and I thought yeah. that was pretty weird that the girls think that. that has, oh, yeah. People think that all the time. That's like a really big, yeah. Yeah, it's like, no, it's flow, girlfriend. It has absolutely nothing to do with your vagina size. I do remember um, I was in Colorado one time visiting this woman that I knew and her, her, we got into the subject of sex because that's what women do. <laughs> and mm -hmm. her daughter had said um, how she hadn't had sex yet. She was fairly young. She had just had her first period. And she, she's, she's like, is it like bigger than a tampon? <laughs> We're talking about penises. <laughs> And her mom was like, yeah, like, I mean, like three tampons. And she's like, oh, my God, that'll never fit. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, oh, that's so cute. All right, what's next on your list? I can talk about how I got my, well, you sold my parents a C-ring. And I <laughs> talked my mom into actually using it. <laughs> well, I would love to hear this uh, which story. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, you know, she had bought the C-Ring, and she didn't really know how to use it. But, I mean, she had, like, used one in the past, I guess, but it was, like, that old fucking weird sex toy shit, you know, that, like, weird jelly stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, that every old sex toy was made of, I feel like. And uh, <laughs> so this was new, and she, she, she's like, you know, I feel like I didn't use it right years ago and that has like put a bad memory in his mat and like in his mind. And so I was like, I was like, I got you. Like, I'll tell you exactly what to do. And so I told her as much as I know, <laughs> you know, how <laughs> to get to <laughs> Right. But I was like, I was like, okay, here's all the knowledge I know. And here's how to put it on. First off, you have to get him willing to have it on. And I was like, just get him a little, a little drink in him. You know what I mean? You'll be good. And then I was like, give him a little sucky sucky. You'll be, he'll be good, you know? And, uh, and then just kind of, don't sneak it on him, but like, you know, kind of work it on there. And I told her, you know, I was telling her about like different loops and stuff and how like, 
don't, you know, at the, so the C ring is going to hang at the base of the penis. So it's not really going to move too much from there, but you don't want it to like pull and tug on the penis because that's going to make him not want to ever do that again. Right. So I was like, put something like more long lasting there. Like, uh, like I feel like silicone or like a cream would be like something that wouldn't really go away as fast. Right. And then I said, you know, use your regular lube for you, you know, you're like water based and whatever. And that should fucking, that should get it going. Right. Like that way it's not tugging on him, but you're also not like using a lube you're not cool with or whatever, you know? And, uh, yeah. So anyway, I talked to her, I probably talked to her about it for like two days straight and how to like <laughs> get it on him. <laughs> And about a month later, she's like, yeah, he won't stop using it, Amy. <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> no, mind you, this is my parents. Like, these are my blood parents. <laughs> I'm telling but, you, you know, parents can say some funky shit. The other day. Um, you know, I mean. So my, my maiden name is Savage. I don't know if everybody knows that. Someday I'm going to make a TikTok and I'm just going to be like, savage, classic, <laughs> ratchet. Like, I'm just going to own it. And um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about like when I was eight and I'm going to have a bunch of people like, oh my God, your name is Savage, you're a beast. And then when I was 28, it was savages, savages, barely even human, you know, from like Pocahontas. <laughs> and and now I'm 52 and it's like savage, uh, classic, bougie, ratchet. And I'm like, Fuck you, people. Oh, yeah. Why wasn't this huh. around when I was 18? Where I could have been For a badass. Sure. <laughs> but I was cleaning out my office because my grandsons were coming to, coming, coming to stay. And they were staying in my office. So I was putting the things around my demo products are away because the grandsons were going to be in here. And, of course, you know, we have the Mr. Dependable or, hey, Mr. DJ, whatever you call it, the the big purple right, blue right. toy. And it's in here. And my, my dad was visiting and we were, I was doing something on the computer and cleaning the office at the same time. And I said, cause you know, I have to put stuff like that away. And I point to, you know, the Mr. Dependable, like, cause I don't want to give my grandsons a complex. <laughs> and my dad goes, my dad goes, what? They're not savages. <laughs> I was like, Did you just make a penis size joke? <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dad. So anyway, <laughs> that was yeah. So it's always awkward when you're talking to parents. But hey, I'm glad your parents are enjoying that toy that I sold them. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, my parents and I have always had a pretty open conversation about sex for some fucking weird reason. Like, I don't know. When I met my my fiance, my now fiance, uh, her family didn't like they really I love you all the time they didn't really weren't huggers um you know they didn't kiss you know what I mean like like I don't know I might kiss my dad on the cheek or something you know and they didn't do that and it was so fucking weird to me and it like it made me realize like how much closer I was with my family and like now it makes sense like okay yeah like they talk to me about sex, you know what I mean? Not like weirdly, not right. like weird, but like, you know, they taught me about sex and, and my parents have always been like these weird sexual beings. So like they're, you know, very lovey and connected, um, you know, a lot of the time and they, they show that physical affection, um, you know, in public in front of other people and, you know, so yes. yeah, I mean, that's, it's nice to have, honestly, it's nice to have had that growing up and not had like a fucking like shun a shameful thought about sex you know what i mean right because <laughs> i think that's really harmful well that's why i love talking about it that's why i like doing the parties that's why i like doing my conversations i like doing my speaking gigs because the more we can talk about it the less com the less uncomfortable it will be and everybody's lives will get better right orgasms make everybody happy right right all right, what next is on your list? Yeah. Um, I could talk about uh, the lack of sexual education in schools um, and how my fiance's doctor told her that she couldn't get an STD because she was a lesbian. What? What? Yeah. She, I mean, this is her story. This isn't my story. But, um, yeah, so I guess she goes to the doctor, and I don't know if she's having some type of issue, and 
she's like, oh, are you sexually active? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, do you think you could be pregnant? And she's like, no. And she's like, okay, you know, do you think you could, you know, like, so you're sexually active, right? Like, um, you sure you're not pregnant? And she's like, no, I'm absolutely positive I'm not pregnant. Like, I have sex with women. Like, I don't have sex with men. And she's like, oh. She's like, okay, so, okay, you're not pregnant. She's like, well, then we can rule out any STDs, too. And she's like, why you know and she's like well you know lesbians don't get stds like you just it doesn't it doesn't happen or you know and it's like that's a fucking doctor you know what i mean right. and it's like that's not the first time i've heard a story like that and you know a lot of people think a lot of fucking doctors for some reason think that us uh, lesbians can't get stds i don't know what the fuck they think we do in bed you know what I mean? <laughs> like that we can't get stds like Oh yeah, no, we're just we don't even use our vaginas. We just like wiggle our boobies back and forth. Like, you know <laughs> what do you think we do? Of course we can get STDs. I think that's gonna be the uh, subtitle of this. We just wiggle our boobies back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> that's hysterical. That is sad. That is sad. Uh they, that it doctors is. would think that. I mean And you know, I mean, but, herpes is just genital to genital contact. It doesn't matter whether it's a right. boy genital or a girl genital. <clears throat> but right, that's silly. Actually, yeah, and I'm, you know, what? I'm just realizing I don't even know if that's how you get herpes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know if you have like a cold sore, or you have like mouth herpes, and you like eat somebody out or suck somebody's dick, that you can get. They can get. They can transfer that to them, and it will become genital herpes. I thought those were two different types of herpes. Damn it. No, I, I, thought they were two. I thought they were two, but I think they can like be contacted like that, like be transferred like that. I don't know. I just anyway, talked don't to somebody it. yesterday who said 90% of people have herpes anyway. So, yeah, I, I heard, I, I've heard that before that people have. Uh, at least simplex one, at least the cold sore herpes. She says 90%. Um, yeah. So that's a pretty high number. Because we were That's talking about um, ethical non-monogamy, which is when you um, you have sex with multiple partners, but everybody knows about it, and everybody's getting tested and sharing the results. Mm. I learned a lot doing this. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can imagine. Just opening up my mind. Okay, that's a good one. What else? Um... I could talk about my sexuality. Yeah, let's do that. I haven't had talk any lesbians on my show, identifying lesbians on my show yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, way to jab, huh? <laughs> um, all right. Well, I could, I mean, I could just start out. Uh, I don't know. You think I should talk about how I came out or just about my sexuality as a whole? Do it all. Okay. So, so I, I am pansexual. Um, I know now that I'm pansexual. Um, I did not know that when I first came out to my parents in seventh grade on accident. So very traumatic <laughs> experience. Um, Hold on. I want to cover because, both of those. What does pansexual mean to you? And then please tell me how you accidentally came out to your parents. <laughs> okay. So pansexual to me, and actually I just, I just talked about this with somebody, um, <laughs> um, I just talked about this with somebody because pansexuals may have a different um, kind of like definition of that per person. Um, for me, pansexual means like the difference between bisexual and pansexual is bisexuals like men and women um, and maybe maybe non-binary folk, but I, I wouldn't include that. Um, I would just say they like men and women. Trans or not, that's up to them. I don't know. But now for me, because I'm pansexual, I'm kind of like, I don't give a fuck what you have under your pants. I'm all for you kind of thing. So I'll do, you know, a man, a woman, a trans man, a trans woman, a non-binary, um, uh, you know, any fucking anything. It, I'm kind of like, for me, pansexual is falling in love with the person or being attracted to the person and not so much being attracted to somebody because they're a man or because they're a woman. Um, 
if that makes sense. Yeah, I liked the way, um, oh, what was that TV show that I really liked? Schitt's Creek. And you oh, said, I love fucking oh. Schitt's Creek. Yeah, and when, <laughs> when David said, I like what's in the bottle, not what's on the label. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's really cool. Yeah, I love David. David. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so. Uh, so, so yeah, so that's what pansexual is. And then, so when I came out, I was in seventh grade and it was slightly traumatic. Now, I'm not the first gay person in my family. I have two gay cousins who are much older than me who came out way before me. And thank God they did because they really paved the way. Um, and kind of like I was behind the scenes at that point. You know what I mean? I might've been like 10 or something. And I heard what everybody was saying not in front of him. Um, so that was kind of fucked up too. I'm like sitting there listening and they're trying to figure out why he's gay. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, but, but you, but you so, already knew by then that you didn't oh, yeah. fit the, yes. fit the mold, I, I guess. Yeah. I, I've, I had been like, I, I have been very like involved with my own self. Like, knowing what's going on with myself um, for a long time. So yeah, so I, I definitely knew where that I was like different for sure. I mean, like my family can recall watching Scary Movie and I think it was the first one, the one with Scream, or they all have Scream in it. The one that was like based off of Scream. Okay. And, and the girl's running out of the house and she has no shirt on. <laughs> do you remember that part no i don't watch horror movies but i can just oh, imagine it's a, your it's little it's a spoof it's a spoof oh okay yeah like, yeah i yeah so so i was i was really young and i think they were watching it for the first time and i don't think they really knew that that part was gonna come on and i'm probably like five or six and i'm sitting on the couch watching it with them you know and uh and this girl comes out and she's topless and she's running with like these huge like boobs, like Pamela Anderson, like boobs. Jugs. And it might actually have been Pamela Anderson, I feel like. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway, I did not turn away from the screen at all during that part. <laughs> Full <laughs> eyes, looking, just, and that's, so. you know, some of my family is like, well, that's when we knew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, so I was in, I was in seventh grade and I had, I had the computer of the house. I had my, uh, my own computer. My dad did like some light things on the computer once in a while. Um, so it was basically mine. Right. So I was at my aunt's house and <laughs> my parents called and they said, Hey, we got to get on your computer. We got to fucking, I don't know, pay a tax bill or something. Right. And I am like shit horrified because my password was, I love insert girlfriend's name at the time here. Um, that was my password, like one, two, three. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't fucking tell them that that's what it is because that doesn't make any sense. Like they're going to fucking know. And then of course, as soon as they got on, they would realize that my background was a picture of her. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is so bad. This is so bad. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't even tell him the password. I just started crying and I was like, I'm gay. I'm gay. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck is happening? You know, <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's how I came out. Um, it took him, you know, it took them a while to really get used to it. I, I don't think they really thought that that was going to happen. And I think it took them a while to adjust to that change. But luckily, you know, I've been with Sarah for seven years and, um, you know, they love Sarah and they are totally cool with my lifestyle and they're like totally cool that I'm gay. And I think just watching them go from like, what the fuck to, Oh yeah, we love you guys. Like, you know what I mean? Like my dad calls Sarah his daughter and stuff. And like, just to see that change in people. I mean, we were talking about this beforehand about people changing and like, it's okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. right like my dad might've called somebody a fag fucking 10 years ago, but now he sticks up for me and my fiance, which is incredible that that can happen. You know what I mean? And that love, I, I just appreciate that so much. I'm so grateful and lucky to have had that, you know? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you have that. I, I will say once <clears throat> a couple of months ago, maybe years ago, somebody on Facebook said, oh yeah, all of a sudden this senator is pro-gay because he has a gay kid now, but before he used to think this. And I said, yeah, that's how people grow and change. They meet right. people who, I, who, have, who are different from them and it humanizes them. And that's how we all grow and change. And that's why it's so important to have a really big circle because the bigger your circle is, the less anybody else is a they, them. It's, right. never, it's never us again. It's never us against them. If your circle is big enough, it's always us. One of my favorite stories is when I finally got to um, make a difference in my parents' opinion about something. They're very conservative Christians. And when the bathroom legislation was coming up in whichever Carolina it was where you could only go in the bathroom that you were born in, like, when, right. all, when all of a sudden that was a big thing, um, yeah. I had gone to my dad's house, my mom, mom and dad's house, they're married. And I, and I said, well, do you have PayPal? And he goes, no, I canceled my PayPal because they support that, you know, disgusting bathroom legislation where anybody can just use anybody's bathroom. And I was like, what? the f <laughs> what and then I said to my mom I'm like do you remember uh Sarah and Sarah was a transgender woman who worked at the college that we all went to forever and so my mom had gone to that college for years and years and years and Sarah worked in the uh, office and I said you remember Sarah right and she's like yeah and and I said this law is saying that Sarah cannot use the ladies room. And my mom said, well, that's stupid. Why would Sarah not be able to use the ladies room? She's a lady. I mean, so I forgot the important part of that there is that Sarah was transgender and it was obvious. Like, um, and so, and she goes, well, that's stupid. Sarah's a girl. Sarah would use the ladies room. And I'm like, no, mom, that's what this law is saying. Sarah can't use ladies room anymore. Sarah has to use men's room. She was born as a man. And my mom goes, well, that's stupid. And I said, well, that's what you're supporting. Right. <laughs> but until I gave her like a person that said, hey, you know this person, this, this law is affecting this person, it didn't click in their minds. Mm -hmm. And so that's the importance of having a big circle so that you can have access to that information and to, to, to the fears and the knowledge and the joy and the whatever you got to have a big circle of people. And that's Absolutely. why I, I like all of the, I've learned so much, obviously, since I started in direct sales, um, but even as each year and <clears throat> every time something comes up, I, that, that, that people have a, um, a feeling about, and they don't even know why they have it. There's going to be pushback. They're really like, no, wait, no, that's, that's not, that's not what I'm comfortable with. And then it's, instead of attacking people for not understanding your perspective, you've got to give them a chance to grow and to get used to it and to say, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't know why I have that thought. Or I had that thought because of this, but that thought was wrong or it's not the same or it's not valid anymore. And right. you know, that whole, you catch more, uh, you know, bees with honey than you do with vinegar or flies or whatever it is, you know, yeah. <laughs> catch bees with honey. Yeah, actually you can, you can though. Um, have a big circle of people. And so yeah. I know lots of, as I'm doing this podcast, I'm realizing like I just did one on polyamory the other day and uh, I know a lot of polyamorous people. I didn't even realize how many people I knew were polyamorous until I thought about it. Yeah, and the same yeah. thing. I know a lot of gay men. I know a lot of lesbian women. I know a lot of people who are non-binary. Um, and I'll admit that one still that one still gives me a little pushback. But I'm like, okay, I just it doesn't affect right. me. Let them be who they are. Um, I know some trans pe transgender people. Um, so each step is a step in just learning about other people. Oh yeah. No, you know, obviously like I, I had, I was, you know, part of the GSA club, which is the gay straight Alliance in high school and stuff. And we had all sorts of everything you could imagine we had, you know, in there. 
And so thankfully, like I have, I got that exposure early because even like some gay men or lesbian women or non-binary, they aren't as like, uh, like open to other sexualities and like other like things within the LGBTQ community. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. No, I had heard it, that the LGBT, sorry, you know, the alphabet, there. <laughs> um, they were not a big fan of drag queens because they just thought it made them look bad. There was... Oh a group out there and it was probably just a small specific group probably yeah but still like there there is people like within the community that like okay like my biggest thing is like a lot of gay men or lesbian women will not date bisexuals because and and you know or pansexuals or because there's this big there's this big you know, idea that bisexuals or pansexuals are, like, inherently just these giant sluts. You know what I mean? That, <laughs> you like, get twice as many people you have to worry about them cheating on you with. <laughs> right. But, it, but it's really just the jealousy thing. You know what I mean? That's all it really is. We aren't actually giant sluts. You know what I mean? Right. It's just, you know, how how people perceive that. Um, well, but, then, yeah. Then it's time to, to make the thing, like, listen, I might love two different types of people, but I'm not non-monogamous like if i'm monogamous i'm monogamous and it doesn't matter who i'm with and that goes back into the polyamory because we had that discussion on on the podcast that i did on polyamory was like so basically without slut shaming you guys are just fucking whoever you want whenever you want she goes yes exactly (laughs) (laughs) but there's a way to do it there's ethical non-monogamy and ethical non-monogamy so I guess the conversation really just needs to be about whether or not you're monogamous with somebody. Right. All right. What's on, what else is on your list? Um, uh, hold on. I think that's, oh, I have one on my phone too. <laughs> How did Sarah come out? Uh, I'm pretty sure she just wrote a Facebook status in like eighth grade. But well, she she was she also knew she was gay for like ever so. Well, she's pretty straightforward, so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's all that was. Oh my god. Okay. Um. So we could go. I don't know if we. Oh yeah, the lack of sexual education in fucking schools. Okay. Yeah. Tell me why I know all of all the different parts of a penis. I know all the different parts of the uterus, but I swear to you that I did not know where my urethra was until like a couple years ago. And that's like fucking embarrassing to say, but uh, like I knew where my clitoris was. I knew where my vagina was. I thought my urethra was where my clitoris was. You know what? I got to tell you, I actually thought that until like a year or two ago. So yeah. (laughs) So like like, literally my mom thought the same thing too. And I had to literally pull up a diagram and she still didn't fucking believe me. I'm like, mom, go get a mirror. Like look for yourself. Like that is where it is. I promise. And like, I got into it like a, like an argument with Sarah. I'm like, no, it's right here. Like I know where it is. And she's like, that's not where it is. (laughs) And I'm like, no, (laughs) Yeah, so. I actually did. I was looking at a diagram, and I think it was somebody said, oh, so stupid, because it's going to show that everybody's got some knowledge gaps. Um, somebody said there's three holes, and I didn't even think about it. And, I mean, obviously, I didn't think I peed through my vagina, but right. it, <laughs> I thought that the urethra was a lot closer to the clitoris. I didn't think it was the exact yeah. same bit, but then when I saw a diagram, I was like, wow, that's... So then when I show the 3D clitoris, you know, I hold it up and I'm like, here's your clitoris and here's your vulva and here's the answer to vagina and your urethra where you pee from is approximately right here. Um, and I show them so that they, you know, get the idea. But you know what I thought was ridiculous? My youngest, hmm. who you know, uh, two weeks before that last podcast that we did, mm-hmm. she did not know that her clitoris was on the outside of her body. And I thought, how that is that is fucking crazy. possible? with what I do for a living and how often I talk about sex. How did you not know? Because I had told her she was having really bad period cramps and I'm like, just go masturbate. You'll feel so much better. And she's like, ew, that's disgusting. And I'm like, why is it disgusting? She's like, it's all bloody. And I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) Where do we think we're going? (laughs) 
So I had to get out the 3D glitter. <laughs> and I had to like, like this. Eh, eh. And then I no. was, I was mortified as her mother to not have taught her that. I just kind yeah. of thought she knew because we all talk, you know, like me and her sisters and stuff talk about stuff all the time. But then I forgot. She's also kind of an airhead. So you can have a full conversation right around her and then she'll go, wait, what? What are we talking about? <laughs> so she's not listening. So that was embarrassing. Yeah. So yeah, we need more sex ed and we need more Definitely. sex ed around a permission to be pleasurable. Permission to enjoy sex, please. Well, um, you know what? No, what? I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to bring up this point and I don't know if I can call somebody out on this. Probably not, but I just want to call out my freaking teacher from high school, my sex ed teacher who fucking sucked. And I want to call him out so bad because he he was so like male oriented like oh yeah, it's all about the men, like, you have to pleasure men, like, like, literally, that's it, like, oh, in a marriage, like, yeah, like, you might want not, not want to have sex because your wife looks like shit, like, like, all kinds of shit like that, and I'm like, oh my god, and, like, me and Sarah still talk about it, like, how fucked up it was that he really said that, like, to a bunch of, like, fucking 15, 16 year olds who, you know, may not have ever had sex and are going to have sex someday or going to be in a marriage you know what I mean? And wow. he's giving us this like very false information of what it's like to be in a relationship. And uh, fuck him for that. All right. Well, let's not use his name, but let's talk about the school in the year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I don't know what year it was, but he is the physical education teacher as well as a health teacher. Um, there's three of them there. So this is only one of them. The other two were okay. Um, and it's Grosso Tech. And I graduated 2015, so and he was still there. He was there all four years. But I think wow. this was either my junior or senior year. See, that's why people need to be taught to teach proper sex ed, because what he was doing was just giving uh -huh. his opinion. And that's what oh, happens. 100%. But that's what happens in a lot of schools. You're going to get the opinion of the teacher, which is why usually sex ed is not, not accurate um, or – you know, it doesn't discuss pleasure and it doesn't discuss the stuff that it needs to have because first of all, the teacher doing it probably doesn't want to do it. Right. But, you know, it's very rare. People like to talk about sex. I'm an oddball. <laughs> 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 Always have been. Um, but yeah, let's call out all sex ed teachers who don't bother to actually care about the subject because you're scarring kids. You're scarring them. You're uh -huh. giving them wrong information and bad information and you're scarring them until somebody like me or Amy or any of the adult educators out there get to get to teach them and undo what you did. Right. And who it, hurt you, yeah. boo? Who hurt you? Stop fucking no hurting shit. other people. <laughs> no shit. And it's, it was, you know, it's just like, like all that time that he talked to us about like, sex and relationship really poorly talking to us about having sex and relationships and only straight sex. Um, you know, he didn't go over anything, anything within the vulva, like anything about woman's pleasure. Like, you know what I mean? Talked about how to fucking, you know, pretty much pleasure a guy with foreskin, but didn't tell us how to fucking do it to ourselves. And you know, that's fuck. That's fucked up, man. Step one, learn to masturbate. <laughs> Yeah, Step I mean, one, take care of yourself first. Know what it feels like to feel good. Yeah, right. That's, that's the first thing. I hate like when I ask. Occasionally, I will ask the question, "When when's the first time you had an orgasm?" And when every now and then I'll get somebody, especially somebody younger, and they'll be like, mm, "I don't know if I've had one yet." I'm like, "Well, then you haven't, because you know damn well when you have had one." And I'm like, "That's sad." That's sad. Yeah. No. I mean, I had my first one when I was four. I wouldn't say that's appropriate, but at least I, and I didn't know it had anything to do with sex. I just knew that it helped me sleep better, you know, but yeah. I've always known how to. <laughs> yeah. So. I, I think, I think I was like eight or nine when I started like masturbating, to be honest with you. And I, I'll never forget my first orgasm. Cause I didn't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was like, 
I was like, you know, like over like a span of a week, I like started like really exploring myself and I was like, okay, okay. And I would get like closer and closer every night, but I didn't know what was going to happen. So I didn't want to like keep going, you know? And one <laughs> night it finally happened. And I just remember just sitting in bed, just like eyes wide, like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and then it never stopped. I just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I swear to God, it's just the same as us as it is with boys. Like, as soon as they discover masturbation, they're in the shower every night. But that's oh, because yeah, they yeah. make a mess, and we do not. <laughs> I know. It's so, I was talking about this with my coworker. Again, we talk about a lot of shit, and he's like, <laughs> he was telling me, he's like, yeah, when I first started masturbating, he's like, my poor dick. He's like, that thing was just raw. <laughs> just, I didn't know what to do with it. He's like, I was punching it, fucking wiggling it around, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever did the job. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we all know those days where you really want an orgasm, but your equipment will just not get you there, and you're just like, please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do anything. I'll do anything. <laughs> and then you realize it's because you're being too rough on it, and you need to back off. Mm. <laughs> or sometimes when you get done after your orgasm, you're like, well, now it hurts. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it wasn't even worth it <laughs> okay so as you know because you've listened to all of my podcasts i like to end with things they don't teach you in school a crazy mix of fun facts random trivia and totally useless knowledge so the weird sex question of the week is what does bbw mean on dating profiles and porn sites oh this is a really hard one because I've seen it. Um, like I would think, I think in general, it's probably big boobed women or big breasted women, but I think it also can be like uh, big butt women and big black women. And I'm, right. I've seen both of those because I watch porn. So, <laughs> well, this one is being very kind. This is big, beautiful women. So I think oh, fuck. All yeah, that's one of them too. <laughs> All of the ones that you said, I think, fit into that, because I think all of those I've also thought, but according to this particular card, it's big, beautiful women. So. Okay, I think I did know that, and I'm an asshole. <laughs> no, you're not. I think all of those answers were very, they were logical, like, and, yeah. and I think that they are all correct, depending on who's posting it. So, all yeah. right, so how can people find you? Um... So you can find me on Instagram. Um, it's my personal Instagram. So <laughs> lots of fun happening there. Um, it's Wavy Amy. So it's spelled W-A-V-E-Y-A-I-M-E-E. -E -E, Wavy Amy. And it's just that. And I think it. I think when you click on it, it just says Wavy. So. <laughs> Wavy. Yeah. I'm actually. Are we friends um, on Instagram? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, look at me. Follow back. What an asshole. You followed me and I didn't follow you back. Okay, I just wow. did. <laughs> All right. You can find me on Instagram at standupcomedysexed, standupcomedysexed.com. And I actually have my own personal website now for my speaking gigs. It's raylenetaskoski.com. And I've set up a Facebook group just for this podcast so you can participate in polls, ask questions, and politely share an alternate point of view. And generally let us know what you think of this episode and any other episode. So search Stand Up Comedy Sex Ed Podcast on Facebook. Please subscribe to this podcast, share with your friends, and make a comment. Leave a little comment and let us know what you think. Um, and give us some ratings, especially if you're on Apple. So thank you so much, Amy, for coming and talking to us today or me today we definitely covered a weird array of, <laughs> of <laughs> topics so have a good day all right you too thank you bye bye, bye.